this trio features um, a pianist called Fabrizio Mocata, who's, I mean, he's really big on the tango scene. I mean, he leads... Uh, he's the musical director for one of these big productions that goes all over the world. And he's a great jazz piano player and, and really dear friends. And then the bassist is Jean, uh, Jean-Marco Scalia, who I'm in a number of bands with. He's not only in my trio, but he's in the uh, Paul Wertico slash John Hellowell project. With John Hellowell is the sax player from Supertramp on all those famous records. And so, you know, I go over to Italy several times a year. And it's always really interesting to play with them. Hey, everybody, it's Mike Jeffers, Chicago Jazz Magazine, ChicagoJazz.com, and welcome to another episode of Around Town. Today, I am excited, very excited, actually. Paul Wertico, the seven-time Grammy Award winner. He's also an associate professor of jazz studies at Roosevelt University here in Chicago. And I can list the things that he has done for the next half hour, but I'm not going to do that now. We're going to talk to Paul instead of me reading off everything that he has done. But he has got two exciting things coming up uh, in Chicago. One, he's playing this coming weekend, April 20. 20- second 28th and 29th 28th and 29th at andy's jazz club of course that's 11 east hubbard street right there in chicago and then he's also doing a clinic in may may 21st specifically at the chicago drum show so we're going to talk about both of those things coming up but before we even get into the professional side of your playing let's talk a little bit about the educational side real briefly because it's actually of course, you have a slam-packed weekend here, Paul. You're actually at the Roosevelt Jazz Fest is happening at the Jazz Showcase on Saturday, uh, which, of course, it's 806 South Plymouth Court. So let's cover that real quickly so we can give everybody the info because I know a lot of our watchers and readers and viewers and listeners and all that stuff love to check out young up-and-coming musicians, and then we'll get into all the other stuff they have happening. So talk a little bit about the Showcase gig and who's playing and what combos are playing. Mike, first of all, thank you for the support. Thank you for everything you do for the whole community, you know. And again, um, you and I have known each other for years. So, you know, I just just keep it going. So you're such a valuable resource for our community. Um, I guess what you were asking me about, so this Saturday, uh, April 29th, from noon until about 3 o'clock, It's the CCPA Jazz Fest. CCPA is Chicago College of Performing Arts, which is part of Roosevelt University. And yeah, it's um, we're going to have like four combos, uh, one of which is the avant-garde combo, which I lead and I'm going to be playing with. It's really great. Uh, It's only a trio. It's saxophone, bass and drums. And so it's really two fantastic musicians. I mean, everybody sounds great, but we have that band. Uh, the Neo Soul combo is playing, the Brazilian combo is playing, and the um, Ellington Strayhorn combo is playing, as well as my Improvisation 3 class. Uh, I teach improvisation there. So this would be, you have Improvisation 1, 2, and 3. So this is Improvisation 3. And there we're going to be playing a couple of tunes. We're going to be playing a tune I wrote called Quasimodo. And then we're going to be playing Darn That Dream, but in a different way. Um, and so, you know, it's so exciting. I, I, this is my 20th year at Roosevelt university and yeah, I just love it. I mean, you know, I was thinking of retiring. I just turned 70 in January, but I'm thinking, why do I want to retire? You know, I feel great. The school is really supportive and I'm just going to keep going. And luckily I'm tenured. So, you know, I'm thinking, why would I want to give up a tenured gig that I love for what? Just to retire? Retiring? I'll, I'll retire when I'm dead. You know, that's the way I kind of look at it. But yeah, if anyone wants to see some of our students, the, the event is free, which oh. is great. Yeah. And it's open to all age groups and everything, obviously, too. So if anybody wants to stop by a jazz showcase at noon this coming Saturday, they're welcome. I think they'll enjoy it. Yeah, well, so I'll tell everybody, visit jazzshowcase.com. Of course, it's 806 South Plymouth Court right there in the South Loop. I'm sure many of you know where it is. And for free, why not stop by and see some up-and-coming incredible talent? And, of course, that whole school, and we'll talk about this on another interview, but that whole school is so interesting to me because it's a lot of hands-on stuff, which leads straight into 
the nice thing about Roosevelt being in Chicago is also not only because all the students can have hands-on stuff and work with people like you, who's like a, a professional actually doing it, but then because they're in Chicago, they can come over to Andy's on Friday night and Saturday night and see see incredible music, which is going to be happening. Of course, there's incredible music all over the city, but uh, the 28th and 29th, you guys are playing from 6 to 9.30. It's the early set, 6 to 9.30, andysjazzclub.com, 11 East Hubbard. And it's the trio from Rome, right? So it's the letter from Rome trio is specifically what it's up on the website. I know it's your trio, though. It's the Paul Wertico trio. So talk about the guys that are in this group because you've played with them many times over the years, and they just happen to be coming into town. And this is going to be pretty exciting. Sure. Um well, the sets, you know, there's two sets a night. So there's a six o'clock that go, and the sets are like an hour and 15 minutes. And then there's an 815. So okay. those are, and last year we played and every set was sold out. In fact, I had really, I mean, I had friends and students that were in line that couldn't get in, huh. which was horrible, you know, but I mean, it's, it's a good problem to have, I guess, except it was unfortunate. So I'm telling everyone to get their tickets early now. So yeah, this trio features um, a pianist called Fabrizio Mocata, who's, I mean, he's really big on the tango scene. I mean, he leads, uh, he's the musical director for one of these big productions that goes all over the world. And he's a great jazz piano player and, and really dear friends. And then the bassist is Jean, uh, Jean-Marco Scalia, who I'm in a number of bands with. He's not only in my trio, but he's in the uh, Paul Wertico slash John Hellowell project with john hellowell's the sax player from super tramp on all those famous records yeah. and so you know i go over to italy several times a year and it's always really interesting to play with them so this particular trio we had one album that came out called free the opera in 2013 where we took not only original things that we wrote or just improvisations but we also took some classical repertoire uh, by Verde and Percini and just improvised improvised on that. So that's ca- called Free the Opera. And then the last record that came out last year is called uh, Letter from Rome, kind of a plan words from Letter from Home, but from the Matheny group. And in that particular record, we played a lot of originals and, and some improvisations. And it's just, it's a really interesting trio. I think it's very unique because last year, not only did we play Andy's, but that Friday before we played Andy's, I had them come and they did a master class for our students where they talked about not only improvisation, but how to take, you know, these different kind of inputs from different kinds of music and we kind of explained it to the students. So actually last year at Andy's, we kind of do that too. I mean, not at length. We don't want to bore the audience with technical you know, jargon, but a lot of times we will just kind of, maybe if we are going to introduce a song, kind of just give them a little background about the song and what we're doing with it. And I don't know if there's any trio that has particularly our sound and our approach. You know, usually there's jazz trios and they might play some jazz or some rock or some Brazilian music. This is really a combination of original music, free improvisations, some standards maybe once in a while, and then tango music and music from opera. And it's and it's just so fun. I mean, you know, both those guys are hilarious. They're both great. And Andy's treated us so well last year. I mean, Chris just took care of us. That's why I couldn't wait to come back. I mean, he's been such a groove. And we're all really excited. Now, the funny thing is that I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm playing in Toronto tomorrow, Wednesday, the 26th, and Thursday, the 27th with them in Toronto. You know, so it's it's just a great opportunity to, to, again, do what I love to do, which is play music as well as teach and just, you know, live a life that I've been lucky enough to have as far as like, you know, not only playing music, but, you know, getting to spend, you know, touring and, and get a chance to really see the world while doing what you love. When did you when did you first start playing with the guys? Right. Especially, I think, the piano player. Right. When did you first start playing with the piano player? Because. I'm talking about the concept of this whole trio. I mean, that's not something that you guys can just, hey, how are you? I'm Paul. I'm so-and-so. You know what we should do? <laughs> so it had to be some sort of an organic thing where all of a sudden you guys started playing, maybe maybe when you were over in Europe and you were playing a bunch of gigs together. 
Um, didn't you tour with them? I think a little bit, maybe that's when all the music sort of like evolved out and you're trying all these different styles. I mean, how did that come about? Cause it's fascinating. Yeah. It's an interesting story, actually. I mean, talk about like when finally the internet opens up and all of a sudden email is available yeah. back in 2008, I was contacted by this guitar player, Raimondo Melalupe, who is actually like a monarch in Italy. I mean, when we go there, he's got this villa with a golf course. And, you know, I mean, you look you look at the stuff in his mansion and, and he's got things, you know, like his family, I think is someone, maybe his great grandfather, his grandfather might have even surrendered Italy, you know, to the during World War. I mean, there's stuff, you know, his mother with the Pope and things like that, right? So all of a sudden out of the blue, I get this email from Romando saying, hey, Paul, you know, we love your plan. Would you be interested in kind of coming over and doing some gigs with John Hallowell from Super Tramp and his bass player, John Marco Scalia? And I was like, sure, you know? So that's what happened. We first started doing that. Uh, and then we we played a little bit. We recorded it. We have two albums out actually too. Uh, one's live from 2008 and 2012. And then we have uh, the new one that just came out last year, uh, called the Bari session where we were actually recorded in the studio. And then about 2012 is where actually Fabrizio showed up. Cause uh, I don't think John could make one of the gigs in Florence. And there's actually a really great little video of us playing for the first time in Florence. And so Fabrizio just, you know, was burning and like, it was just like, okay, you know, <laughs> just instant camaraderie and that's how the trio was formed so that's why in 2013 we recorded at romando's uh studio he has a label called ram records and we recorded at his studio and that's how the first thing came about and then ever ever since then we've been really just touring a couple times a year you know it's it's fantastic i was just there last year again um and the letter from rome record was really interesting too because this was i don't know if the, a few years ago now we had a day off on one of our tours and we just went into the studio alpha music studio in rome just to have fun we weren't even thinking of making a record we just wanted to you know spend a day off just playing and recording and we really didn't think much about it until about a year or two later we listened to it and we went hey there's a record there this is really good <laughs> and that that's how that happened you know that's how some of the best recordings happen too, right? When you when it's spontaneous and you really actually don't, you're just playing. It's almost like you're playing a gig, right? I mean, you're not super planned out and worried about this, that. You're just playing. That's some of, some of the best stuff that comes out of that. I know you've done recordings like that in the past too, because we've talked about it with other groups and it's just, it comes out and there's so much interaction because you're not worried about actually putting it out. You put it out, right? Right. It's not like take one, take right. two, you know, it's just, yeah. And, and, and the term playing music, I mean, that's really the one to keep in mind because, you know, sometimes people work music, you know, playing, especially for somebody like me, you know, I like to feel like a kid in a sandbox, you know, I, I don't like, you know, I obviously play all kinds of music, some of it's planned out, you know, written out, all these kind of things. But in general, what I really like to do is just play, you know, just live the life in the in the moment with people you want to be around and have a conversation through music and that's sort of what happened on that record you know yeah well that's what that's what's going to be really cool about this weekend too because you're doing two nights you're doing four sets so it's andysjazzclub.com we're going to send everybody over there 11 east hubbard street to paul's point Get tickets, get reservations now, because I know they take reservations. For those of you that have not been to Andy's, I always like to say this, Paul, easy parking right at Shaw's Crab House, right next door. They got a valet. You can pull right up, hand it right off. We don't want to give anybody any excuses not to come down there because they can't park their car. So it's super easy. Plus, Andy's has a great menu, too. So you can go down there, man. You're going to hear some incredible music, especially after you guys are playing two nights in Toronto. Then you come back. You guys are probably going to be on fire on Friday and Saturday. So... Friday and Saturday, April 28th, 29th, andysjazzclub.com. Get tickets, get reservations now so that you can get in the place. And of course, because you are like the hardest working drummer in show business here, you've got the Chicago Drum Show. You're I'm, I'm skipping over probably 12 other gigs, but we're going to talk about the Chicago Drum Show, which is happening May 20th and 21st. Of course, it's at Prairie Events Center, which is at the Kane County Fairgrounds right in St. Charles. 
uh, rebeats.com, linking everything up below so you can get the full scope of what the Chicago Drum Show is. It's actually in its 32nd year, which I cannot believe it's the 32nd year. But you're going to be doing a clinic there on the 21st Sunday at 3 p.m. So talk, you know what? Talk a little bit about the drum show, too, because I know you were around right when it first started. So was I, and I can't believe it's been this long. But they have, I think, over 100 vendors I saw on their on their website. They have clinics all day on Saturday and Sunday. And then you're going to be doing a master class clinic at 3 p.m. on Sunday, which is open to everybody that buys a ticket to come to the drum show, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rob Cook is is the person that rebeats that's run this, yeah. and yeah, I've I've appeared several times. I mean, back one of the earliest times I remember, I, I don't remember even what year it was. It might have been I don't I don't even remember. But also, one of my students at the time, Hannah Ford Welton, she also played that day too, and then also maybe even before that, I remember. Um, God, this might be my sixth time there or something appearing. I mean, he's been so good to me. And one year, I mean, uh, Rob just actually talked to, uh, um, there was a video um, and he was just saying that he remembers this one time where I just went just as a, you know, because I love to go because it's really one of the few le remaining drum festivals right. actually. Right. And you want to support it and it's always fascinating. But I, I just show up and then Rob, you know, Rob goes, Paul, so-and-so just, he just canceled. He couldn't make it. And, and and I said, I'll do it. I'll do it. So like an hour later, I was on stage doing a clinic. I just went around <laughs> and picked out stuff, you know? and And so this one, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Cause it's the last clinic of the day before the raffle and all that. And, and there's some really good people appearing. I mean, you know, Jerry Brown is appearing there, there's, it's going to be really, it, it's, it's such a great show. And, you know, the fact that it's in Chicago, you know, it, it really keeps things alive for all the local musicians that want to not only come to hear people or, or, you know, learn things, but also, um, you know, if, if you have a broken lug, you know, on your drum, you can probably find <laughs> replacement parts there. I mean, they have everything there from new things to people just kind of getting rid of old parts or selling like vintage symbols. You know, it's it's really it's really a fantastic thing. I hope Rob keeps it going and going. But yeah, I didn't really realize it's been over 30 years of this. It's amazing. I know. I, I can't believe it either. But, to, you know, to your point, and there's probably a lot of people that have not been to the show. So, again, it's on May 20th and 21st. It's all day, each day, all afternoon. So get all the information at rebeats.com linked up down below. It's at Kane County Fairgrounds right in St. Charles. Super easy to get to. But, you know, that's the one thing that it, it actually astonished me because. I haven't really paid that much attention to all the different drum manufacturers and the vintage shops and the online vintage shops and all the different things, it's just simply because, you know, I'm I'm in the middle of doing a million other things as all, all of us are. And I just know when it is and I, I'll make it there and, and check everything out. But man, there, I mean, there's so many vendors, there's so many vintage drum things, there's so many different things. So if you're fascinated by drums, this is the spot to go. And also you're going to meet everybody because everybody hangs out over there. So it's, it's not like you're online right. and you're sending an email, you're talking to Steve Maxwell, he's standing right there, you know, or whoever. And, uh, and then you or get to Buddy Carlos or whoever, yeah. you know, you have famous musicians just showing up, either showing stuff or just hanging out, you know, yeah. people that love drums. Why not? So Le Lester, Lester Merle's going to be there. I haven't seen Lester Merle in years. So he's going to be there at a booth. He's not even playing. He's just hanging at a booth. You know, I mean, it's that kind of stuff. So with the clinic and what you're doing, I mean, I'm assuming it's for all, all ages, all different levels and stuff. But, you know, typically for something like this, when you have so many different, you know, people coming there of all different levels, I mean, how do you approach that? Is it just kind of like you're talking percussion, you play a little bit and then to describe things and do a little Q&A? Or, I mean, how do you approach something like that as opposed to doing something at a college where, you know, everybody's level is certain heights, you know, in the industry? Great question. Well, first of all, you know, the difference between a master class and clinic, you know what that is, obviously, that a master class is where, you know, it's more of an educational thing where then people will come up and, you know, play and then you'll comment on them. It's it's more of a give and take. A clinic is more of a performance where you present your your thing. Yeah. Um, and so on this one, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to be playing along with tracks. I thought, you know, at turning 70, you know, I, I do 100 push-ups a day and everything. I thought maybe I'll start off doing, you know, 25 push-ups on stage or something. <laughs> and then, 
you know, I, I don't know yet. This is just kind of, you know, some things that are running through my mind. You know, maybe play along with Last Train Home so people can actually see that I actually can do that, you yes. know, <laughs> and then play along with some other tracks um, that I've played on just to kind of show people sort of what's happening. Because, you know, when you go up and, and you know, if people are just talking about like holding your sticks correctly or just working on the rudiments, right. sometimes other people have already done that. So I can, I kind of want to find out, especially at my age and after done, after having done a bunch of these uh, where I've covered some of these other things, what am I going to do this time? So yeah. that's what I'm thinking of doing, you know? Well, and it's so interesting too, because I mean, I haven't done a clinic probably in 15 years just because it, it, it isn't in my wheelhouse, but when I was teaching and stuff, YouTube wasn't prevalent as as it is now. So if you want to learn how to hold your sticks, you can do a search for YouTube and find 47 people talking about how to hold the sticks on YouTube. To me, to your point, I think playing and having people see you actually play and being in the room and experiencing live music and seeing a master play the stuff right in front of you is more advantageous to anybody of any level, don't you? It kind of gets your juices flowing. Yeah, and you know, I think, I mean, I love to solo. I love drum yeah. solos, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I love playing music. You know, I like backing up singers because I love lyrics. So I think a good thing is to show what we do in the real world as opposed to just at a drum clinic when you're, you know, have to show off your, you know, right. your chops and all those kind of things. Um, yeah. So and I was also even thinking about like, you know, we'll see. This is all like kind of what I'm planning out. So I'm giving away what I'm thinking about. But, you know, even having a mic so I could even talk about when I'm playing like, you know, say you're playing Last Train Home, which is about like five and a half minutes long. You know, what's going through your brain when you're playing exactly the same thing over and over again? You can't miss out on one sixteenth note. Right. And like, say what happens if your left hand starts getting tired? So where where does your brain, what do you do to, to not, you know, to overcome that feeling? Because th that's true. When I, I play something like that, sometimes you're going, oh, wow, I still have like a minute or two minutes it's like the marathon <laughs> how do you get through that what do you what do you start concentrating on to uh, um you know to divert your attention from something that might be fatiguing you know what i mean <laughs> and then also like when you're playing with something what are you listening to when you're playing you know are you listening because you know a lot of drummers you know bassists are our right hand man i mean you know right. you know married to bass player but you know for me i've always been married more to the front line you know, it's really funny because I love when I play, you know, people ask me about comping. When I comp, I'm actually play, playing like a piano player. I'm playing the harmonic rhythm, you know, so I've not only got the melody in my head when I'm backing up soloist and the form, but, you know, I'm not just counting two bars and four bar phrases. I'm actually in the music. And that's why, you know, I've had people say when they got lost, they can listen to me and they'll know where they are in the form. So if I play with something, I was thinking of playing with my song Almost 16, which is it's 15 beats long. It's three bars of four and a bar of three, four, you know, just like, well, how do you play along with something like that? You know, or yeah. how do you play? Like if I play with another track um, and all these things are happening around you, what do you do? You know, like wh what, what are you listening to, to, to stay inside the music as opposed to just play too much stuff or not enough stuff or things that, that take away from the music as opposed to add to it. And then I might even put, you know, I, I did that duo album with Frank Catalano. I've got some of his tracks without me. So maybe I'll just play along with yeah. that. So it'll, be, since I haven't listened to that record in a while, it'd almost be like, I'm just playing, you know, like he's in another room, which when we recorded, we couldn't even see each other. That was like one of the first things that real sounds in Skokie and we couldn't even see each other and we were playing together, you know? So things like that, I think that might be, might be interesting, hopefully. You know, no, I think so. I, I love all of that. And everything you just said makes a ton of sense, too. And I think having you talk from the stage about that and playing and then describing and talking about that, it's going to I mean, that's that's that to me is why I would go to a clinic, because I don't need to hear about how to hold a drumstick or what this is or that is or whatever. What you just talked about is that that's that's perfect, I think. So I think everybody should go check this out. I want to be mindful of the time because we're going to run out of time here, but rebeats.com. So the Chicago drum show, the 36th 
uh, annual Chicago Drum Show. Paul Wertico is performing at a clinic May 21st, 3 p.m. And get tickets, rebeats.com. Uh, you know, get tickets, get out there, enjoy yourself. Go both days because there's a lot of great stuff happening out there. And of course, I'll remind everybody, paulwertico.com, all the recordings, all of his tours, everywhere else he's playing. I'm going to have him back on the show for a longer form interview where we can delve into all sorts of other stuff in the next couple of months. But uh, Paul, I'm glad we jumped on today because I wanted to make sure we did this hit so that we could let everybody know about these exciting shows that you have coming up this weekend. And of course the drum show, man. So thanks so much for jumping on and man, you're going to, you, you got a busy week ahead of you. So good luck. <laughs> Thank you again, Mike. It's really great. I really hope to see a lot of people out there. I think they'll really enjoy it. And hopefully they'll come up and talk to us too. Cause sometimes people, you know, they're afraid to talk to people. They think, Oh, what am I going to say? If you like the music or whatever, come up and say hi. I love to talk to people and, and get their feedback on what they what they got out of it, too. Because music is not just a one way. We're not just blowing things out to people. It's really about the audience and the, the dance between the audience and the stage. And it's really important to feel what and understand what people got out of the music, you know. Yeah. So it's thank you again for everything you do. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for being on. And and to your point, it's a relationship between the audience and the musicians. And that's how the whole thing happens. And that's how creativity expands out and, and continues to grow. So, all right. Thanks for being on, Paul. And as I always tell everyone, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. All things Chicago Jazz on ChicagoJazz.com. And until next time, hopefully I will see you all somewhere out on the scene. <laughs>